Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show, where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. All right, welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We are your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. And, you know, we always try to bring on special guests um, to our podcast to have conversations about what they're doing in the real estate space and how they can uh, make a difference. And we've had people on before talking about syndication and that kind of stuff. And I think today is going to be a very interesting conversation because this is a little bit different. Um, I want to introduce Mr. Sam Sells from Wild Mountain um, Holdings and Capital. Welcome, Sam. Hey, thank you, Amber and Glenn. I, uh, what I liked what we talked about before we got started here was that you do a lot of investing, you and your, your team, but you, you used a term that I loved. It was called impact investing. For everybody listening, it's impact investing and that you want to invest not only for a profit, because that's where all in business make a profit, but you want to make an impact in neighborhoods and in people's lives. So you have a real purpose to what you're doing. You're kind of, you're kind of much more purpose driven than just being a capitalist. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say. And, uh, you know, I, I learned uh, a long time ago when I was, uh, you know, almost almost a humanitarian, uh, spent, you know, 10 or, or so years doing global health. And I learned that the things that make a system really sustainable in the health sector was when incentives were aligned. So doctors make money, um, and they're incentivized to come practice medicine in that way, not just because of the goodness of their heart. Um, and it, if you're in a foreign country, there's different incentives that got to be aligned. But once those incentives are aligned, then it becomes really self-sustainable. And so we looked at, you know, I want to make a difference in housing because at the end of the day, it all comes back to our home, you know, our home life and so forth. And so how do you improve home life? Well, one of the things that I can do is by creating a nice, um, safe, clean place for people to live. And if I can do that, then maybe I can help improve life and health outcomes and these other things, educational outcomes, reduce poverty and all these other things that are linked to the home. And, um, you know, just how do I do that and align incentives? Well, uh, the best way to do it is within a capitalistic paradigm to align profit incentives. So if you invest in a way that creates better homes, but you can also make money doing it, uh, then it becomes self-sustainable and it grows far beyond me. So if I screw it up and go completely under, but everybody else takes that initiative or other people take the initiative and go on and be successful at it, then wonderful Then we've made a big impact in society. Wow. I'm curious why that why that ticks for you did something happen in your life earlier in your life were you raised that way like what what is it that made you have this desire to make it and i think it's awesome by the way i think you know we mm -hmm. need more people like you in the world <laughs> what what you think caused that in you yeah so i i grew up um american poor is what i call it you know um american poor and afghan poor or Sub-Saharan Africa poor are completely different things, right? Um, and so there were there were times in my childhood where we didn't have running water, we didn't have power. I took baths in a horse trough in rural Oklahoma. I remember one winter, my dad put the horse trough up on cinder blocks and put a fire underneath it. And if we get too close to the fire, because it's like snowing outside and we're taking a bath, uh, you get too close to the fire and you burn your buns off because it's a metal horse trough right and you get too far away you freeze and so trying to figure out like where's this happy medium oh, wow <laughs> you know and i loved my childhood though i don't regret my childhood i'm not sad about that i couldn't buy you know nike pumps or whatever what i uh, remember is that my parents were incredibly good people and they faced incredible challenges and uh, we were still happy uh, but you know so coming out of my childhood and my teenage years for whatever reason I decided you know I need to do three things in my life one I need to serve God uh, number two I need to serve my country and then I need to serve my fellow man so after I graduated high school I went and served on a mission 
after that, uh, it took me a few years of working in construction before I went and served my country, joined the military. Um, and that's where I really got into global health and traveled all over the, the world, working with foreign militaries, foreign governments, helping them develop healthcare systems, uh, fixed wing, rotary wing, cast ev uh, casualty evacuation off battlefields. Super cool stuff, interesting stuff. And then, you know, coming out, ending towards the end of my career is trying to decide how do I branch that over. And I had done a stint with USAID, the United States Agency International Development. They really wanted me to come back. Uh, my family was very interested in me not being gone all the time. And, uh, you know, kids want to see their dad every once in a while weird, you know. <laughs> and so trying to be a better husband and father and being around more. It's like, well, how can we do this locally? And healthcare is incredibly expensive and restricted to get into. And so I was like, well, what's what's the root of everything? Let's go back to the root. And that's where we got to homes and then real estate. And I flipped homes for years on the side as a way to just augment, you know, I enlisted in the military and we made nothing and I was flipping homes and that's how we made our money. Um, and then I became an officer and made, but made better money, but still, you know, um, we, we got back into real estate and that's kind of where it took off, but we just wanted to do more. Yeah. You know, that story though, tells a lot about who you are as a person and your tenacity, because, you know, a lot of people that, that would have grown up like that. I mean, Glenn and I grew up with no money, but we weren't, we weren't having to take baths and horse troughs. <laughs> we, had, we had no heat in our house. We had a wood stove growing up a fireplace, but not oh, yeah. you know, a bathtub. So you usually, you usually had hot water. But, yeah. but that says so much about you because, you know, a lot of people that grow up like that say like that, you know, they, they don't have the, the wherewithal or the tenacity or the you know, vision, vision, yeah. vision mm -hmm. to, to want something more for their life and to be able to help other people in turn. So, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think it's been like a blessing and a curse. And, and each one of my brothers and my sister, we've all kind of learned different lessons. But like, I grew up sick of things breaking on me all the time. Like, because you buy really cheap stuff, it always breaks. Yeah. And so some of my siblings are like, oh, you just always buy cheap stuff because it, everything breaks. I'm like, no, buy nicer stuff and it doesn't break. And then you spend more money on nicer stuff and I use it forever. But, you know, they're like, oh, Sam's the one who likes to buy nice stuff. I'm like, yeah, I, I like tools that don't break. We have a psychology, <laughs> or psychology behind it, right? Yeah, there's a psychology behind it, right? And so it's just this, I don't know, somehow all that ties into the fact that I just really want something that's self-sustainable that I don't have to touch and work on all the time. And and uh, in lieu of trying to fix things over and over again, which I just try to do more and more and more. It's funny you could have, you know, your your mission in life, you know, you're you're serving God, serving your country, serving your fellow man. You could have chose a lot of things, but you chose real estate, which happens to be one of the most lucrative investment vehicles you can get into. But it's funny you you see it as lucrative, but yet I almost feel selfish. I look at the money side of real estate all the time. I mean, I love I love. <laughs> I, I look at that side of it all the time. That's on the real estate. But now it's funny because our our you know on our tagline for our flipping company it is um, uplifting lives and communities. And yeah. you know we are. I'm actually more focused on the internal team that we have and the people that we touch by helping them get out of tough, tough situations, but also helping my team elevate their own lives too. Um, you know, everybody around me kind of is is what we're we're doing. And we're, it's funny. We're I'm in the middle right now. You know, we have a business coach and. Um, the last session we were at, we really started to elevate our game. We said, listen, let's decide what our real purposes are here. Let's, you know, we have a purpose and we talk about our, our investor pros, our coaching business. And um, we're trying to figure out what our, what our, our purpose is. And ironically, everybody did individual purposes and I'm still working on mine. Like I'm still, I sent over to my coach a couple ideas. Like, I love that one. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I do anymore after I, I said it five minutes ago, but now I want to change it. So I'm working, you know, I'm tweaking, <laughs> it's got the same, but my, for, for me, it's inspiring people. Like I look back and say, what, what makes a difference? And for me, it's inspiring people, you know, and I, I get when you have a purpose, I'm starting to drill down on mine to really kind of just get it. How many people do I want to, you know, um, make an impact on how many, you know, I'm trying to get drilled down on some purpose stuff. And so I get what you're saying. Once you start to find that drive deep inside you, you run your business from a different place, right? You look at things through a different, different shaded lenses. Would you agree? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. I, and it, yeah, go ahead, Amber. Go ahead, Sam. 
I would, um, I just, you know, our, our decisions, you know, make up who we are in life, right? Our everyday simple decisions that we make. Uh, and then our experiences that we have based on our decisions go in to feed in what our next decisions are and inform that. And I, you know, for a long time in my life, I took every opportunity to go out and serve my fellow man, even if it was in, you know, ugly situations. So I volunteered to go to Afghanistan. I volunteered to go to um, wherever else I could go, even if it was um, ugly, gross, and just as an opportunity to go out and see, uh, not, not the, the, definitely see the world, but not in the sense of like, I just want to go and tally up how many, you know, notches I have on my belt. I've been to 37 countries, you know, or something like that. It's the point of getting to better experience uh, mankind and the challenges we face in life. Um, and there, a lot of perspective has come from that. Um, for one, I, I don't need a lot. Uh, family means a ton because at the end of the day, that's, that's who you have, right? Yeah. You know, if, if you guys lost all of your business, you still have each other and that's, you know, that's what really matters. In fact, that's who you spend the most time with, right? You're yeah. here as much as you, as much money as you put into any flip, it doesn't give you any, you know, comfort, <laughs> no. you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, <laughs> You know, I, I know these soft things uh, really do matter um, and, and they matter for all of us. And we just have to understand that. You're pretty lucky to have found something that fills you up like this, because so many people go their whole life searching for that. You know, it's something that that makes them feel energized and like they're doing good in the world and like they have a purpose. And I like like to me, one of the things that I that I think is that you know, the family dynamic in our world has really, really taken a backseat to a lot of, yeah. a lot of families. And I, I don't think it's even intentional. I think it's because people get busy, you know, most of the time it has to be a dual income family to keep up with inflation and everything. And that's one of the things I love about when we are able to work with students and teach them real estate and, and how to invest in real estate is it gives people more choices and time freedom so that they can spend the time doing what they want and you know like like I can speak for women like the whole mom guilt thing is super real because you know like yeah. on one side you might have this ambition and you might have you know want to to do something whether it's in the world or in the workplace or whatever that, that helps fill that void but on the other hand you want to be this awesome mom that's there for everything for your kids that that they need and I think so many women are so stressed because they're they're like superwoman. They're trying to be the best wife and the best employee and the or the business owner or and best mom and best daughter and best sister. like like we're trying and I that, I guess that probably goes for men too. But but I think that by introducing people to real estate, it can take a lot of that stress off of the everyday things that are going on and it can in turn lead to a happier family, which in turn, you know, goes generations down the line because that family was happy. And then yeah. the next family is happy. So like, I know it sounds kind of super cheesy and, and pie in the sky, but I do, I, I, I think it can really improve family lives. I do. I say, I always say all the time at our workshops too, I say, you know, money won't make you happy, but the lack of money can bring tremendous stress. And it's tough to see happiness when you're focused on the stress all the time. And I know it's so funny because I grew up like I, I grew up, I guess I never used that term, but American poor too. It, it wasn't quite, I live in the country, I had cows in my backyard. So I, I you know, I get, yeah. <laughs> I know all about those pain. I never bathed in, eh, I'm sure I was dunked in one by my brother. So I'm sure that I'm sure in the barns with the manure and all that. So I, oh, I got, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I failed hay for a little, so I know, I know, oh, what yeah. but you know, I, I think that. I think when again when you when you have when you have money you don't have to have that constant stress on you because most people have to have something they have to have a home they have to have power they have, you know it's tough you need to really have a cell phone these days you need to have a you know there's certain things to have a certain you level you, yeah, you have to have certain money for a quality of yeah. life you know I almost envy people that that I sometimes envy people that really have no need for money like I don't care I'm like wow I I care I guess I like, <laughs> growing up with nothing I I always wanted to make sure that I have something and I have a residual income that comes in. That, that keeps me so I can, I'm not always there, right? I'm in business, so I have ups and downs. The market's changing right now and stuff is happening. So 
it's not always perfect, but you know, knowing that we have income that comes in, it puts us at a better place to not have to worry about certain things, food on the table, a roof yeah. over our heads, you know, those kind of things that take away that kind of stress. You know, our, my stress now is will I grow next year? Will I not grow? Will I do, you know, what's going to happen here? How many houses will I buy this year? Right. That's there are different levels of stress, but can I finally afford that private jet? <laughs> I don't think you're talking about a private jet. We have a guy talking about philanthropy. I feel like a, I feel like a big capitalist idiot now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad thing though, because when you, like, like, just like Glenn always says in the workshop, money makes you more of what you already are. So like, right. if, you, if you're a really kind hearted, generous person and you make money, you're going to be able to share that with other people right. and do good things with it. And if you're a jerk before you have money, and then you get money, you're just going to be a bigger jerk. So, it, you know, it works both ways. So even even if somebody has a private jet, you know, maybe you're flying supplies overseas. To, yeah, that's true. I, you know, I, 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 a buddy of mine had a plane. He had a, his boss, he had a small little plane. But one of his things he did every month, he flew, he flew kids that couldn't afford to get to like cancer centers and stuff. He flew them down to children's hospitals, like, you know, several. Oh, hours that's later. awesome. I, yeah. that, that was one thing that I, I was like. Wow, man! You, do, awesome. you know, here's a, here's a guy I play racquetball with, so we're always busting each other's stones all the time. And I'm like, "You're doing what today?" Wow, I was gonna go out and try and buy a house. That's yours. Yours is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like what you're saying. So yeah. So yeah. It's, uh, so this bus helping your investing, though. I would imagine that you know, if you're a syndicator, you're raising money, right? You're raising money for deals, and you're putting deals to that. what what size? What's an average size complex? I'm assuming you do residential, I mean, commercial complexes. Yeah, so we're doing a 150 unit or larger apartment complexes right now. We've learned through because, you know, coming from the background I did, I, I had no idea, right? And I didn't have a coach that was dumb. I should have gotten a coach right at the beginning. But I say myself um, a ton of time, effort, and pain uh, and made a lot more money for my investors. Um, and so, you know, I think. Uh, you know, 150 units or more enables us to get at the business plan that we really want. It takes time because these are distressed communities that we buy. Um, and uh, we we have to, you know, we have to put forth a lot of effort to make it a win. Yeah. Well, you must raise, you. so you're doing that. You're raising money from other people to, as a syndicator, for listeners who don't know, a syndicator is when you raise money. Essentially, you go out and get a loan yeah. for the property, but you have to have the down payment. So, twenty percent of a ten million dollar project, you got to raise two million bucks, right? Something right. like that. And then they own a piece of the property, you own a piece of the property. Everybody goes in together. Right? That's right. And what's cool is the way the way it's set up with uh, the corporate structure is like if I go, let's say I go um, belly up. Try not to use military vernacular here. <laughs> Uh, if I go belly up personally, or I go bankrupt or something like that, the, the apartment complex is owned in its own entity. And so it lives and dies in its own entity. Uh, it doesn't matter if, if you guys invest and you guys have terrible problems, it's not going to take down the apartment complex. It's not going to affect our residents. If I have terrible problems, it's not going to take down the apartment complex. It's not going to affect our residents. All the investors that are tied into that deal are into that deal and it is an investment every investment has risk sure. square now you should not invest unless you understand that you could lose it yeah and if you can't handle the thought of ever losing any money then put your money in a bank account and while you are losing to inflation at least you can feel in control <laughs> You feel in control. You're not, but you feel like you're, <laughs> you're not, but, but you're it's the illusion. Money. That's what you're doing. Yeah. So, right. Um, and so it's, it's a, yeah. When you're raising money out there, are you, because I, I would imagine that your purpose helps you. I, do, when you're presenting people, do you let them know that you're looking to, you know, make impactful investments? Is that part of what your yes is? Like, this is this, and I'm saying this is what I do. I'm not just here for your money, but I want to tell you what we do, why we do. Because I would imagine that would attract a lot of good people. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, you know, the last probably this year, we've really started trying to uh, improve our marketing, because in the past, I was just always doing it behind the scenes, I, you know, friend to friend, you know, neighbors, friends, family, people that I knew. Um, and then this year, we've tried to really start marketing and let people know what it is that we're doing, because I, I just can't find anyone else who's doing it on a very 
certainly not on a big scale, unless there's like the Rockefeller Center or somebody else who already has billions of dollars and they don't need regular folks involvement. Um, we want regular folks to get involved. We want the folks to make a difference. They don't have to invest with us. They can invest in whatever ways they want to. I just want to make a difference. And if you want to join us, wonderful. If not, go make a difference yourself. If you don't care about making a difference, put your money in stocks and just hope yeah. that returns right. come back, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, so how, how do you continue to, this would be a good little tip for everybody, our listeners, when you're doing this, how do you keep finding more people to raise money from? Or do you have a few guys that have tons of money and just say this, I need another 10 million, let's go. You know what I mean, you know, how do you, what do you, how, what's that relationship look like and what's that ongoing drive to find money look like? Yeah, so we um, we do partner with other people who have networks. And so they'll bring in, um, you know, their investors that would align well with what we're doing. And uh, and then they, you know, because they're becoming part of the deal, they become part of the deal. It falls underneath the Security Exchange Commission guidelines because it is governed by the SEC, who is trying to protect regular everyday investors, which is what they should be doing. And we wholeheartedly support that. We just want to make sure that if we're going to play that game, we have to understand the rules so that we can abide by them um, and, and play to win. Um, and so we we do that quite a bit now. We used to not do that very much because I was always concerned that people would come in incorrectly and we would get ourselves in trouble. I have no desire to go to jail. That's not my happy place. That's not, not part of your vision. Yes, not yeah, part of the vision. Of the prison ministry from the inside. That's yeah, right, doing. right. <laughs> no. There's no car. There's no house that's worth that to me at all. You, you know. Yeah. Well, that's great. So you, yeah. So you, you never with other people. That make that makes a lot of sense. You have certain groups of people that I know. I have a friend of mine that does that, and uh, he he has a lot of dentists in his group that has. Uh, they that's what they do. They invest in larger projects, and so. They come together and they pool their money and then they invest, right? Same kind of thing. So you got a lot more bang for your buck by getting groups of people as opposed to one person. But your mission is interesting. So yeah. Do you do you invest in one state or do you invest all over the United States? So right now we have uh, assets in six or seven different states, okay. um, including Alaska, because I used to live there and we bought some stuff in Alaska. Right. Um, primarily right now we're focused in Texas just because we like the markets and the Fed is on a campaign to kill everyone who owns homes um, or property. And if they destroy the real estate market, then that bleeds into everything else, right? Yeah. Um, so that's their campaign. Um, ironically, their campaign directly impacts minorities and lower income families far worse than it does anybody else. Um, and they have openly said that. Um, that doesn't get much news right now. I'm sure it would. It never does. It never does. Yeah. Um, it would if there was a different administration, but I don't think the way things are right now, that's going to get broadcasted. So, um, yeah, I, you know, we're mainly in Texas, are focused in Texas right now. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'm all about Texas. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so, Sam, how would people find you if they want to know how to invest with you? Yeah, great. So you can go on our website, wildmountaincapital.com. Uh, you can also reach out to me individually, Sam, at wildmountaincapital.com. Um, LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, my Instagram is at clean money, Sam. I like to talk about clean money, clean money being investing in a way that we know where the money's going is transparent. Um, like when you guys invest money, you know exactly where those dollars are going, right? When you invest in the stock market, you have no idea where that money's going. Um, it is not clean at all. It's not transparent. You just don't know. Yeah. Um, and it could be used for whatever, buying somebody a Ferrari or whatever. Right. You just don't know. We just you saw just that car. with the, F, what, the FTX, whatever it's called. We just saw that guy, right? Oh, yeah. 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 People made him rich. And you oh. invested your dollars in him and made him rich, right? Oh, yeah. Clearly. Right. Well, I Clearly. love your passion. I love your mission. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I think it's great. I think anybody who wants to invest, if you if you feel like you're drawn to that type of investing, and you know, I, I like the term impact investing. I, I may I steal it actually. I kind of like that. So <laughs> okay. like, I do I do like it. So Im impact investing is good. So Sam, thanks for being here, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you guys, if you want to invest, make sure you connect with Sam. Any final words? 
Uh, thank you guys for all the, all the work you do. And flipping homes does impact communities. It makes them better when you do it the right way. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks again for being here, man. I appreciate it. Everybody, we'll see you on the next episode of the Real Estate of My Show. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review. And leave us your questions and comments, and we will personally answer. And please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.